everybody welcome to the channel and a very warm welcome to you all in today's video i'm going to be looking back at the goals and aspirations i set out for myself at the beginning of 2021 and we're going to look at how i've done against those and then i'm going to set some goals and aspirations for 2022 i'm also going to be looking at my top five buys of this year as well as my top five wish i hadn't bothered so stay tuned if that sounds like something you'd like to see now before i get into the video if you're not already a subscriber i'd love it if you'd hit the subscribe button i am almost at 600 subscribers which might not be a lot in the grand scheme of things but it is a massive achievement for myself and i'm so proud of this channel and i'm so grateful to everyone who does subscribe and watch the videos if you do like this kind of video don't forget to give it a thumbs up but i also do lots of different videos throughout the years so we have project shares we have tutorials we have lots and lots of hauls and we have design team videos showing off collections working with them all sorts of things so definitely stay tuned to the channel because there is a lot more to come in 2022 so without further ado let's look at what i set out for 2021 now this is my traveler's notebook this year i said i wanted to try creative journaling and i have definitely done that and i have loved it i have filled almost three traveler's notebooks with memories and creativity and pretty things so that is something i will be carrying on with so these are the goals that I set out for 2021. I have some personal ones over here and I have some crafty ones. So we're going to start off by looking at the personal side. This was to do with me and Sophie. Sophie is my pony. Um, and one of the things I said I wanted to do was a beach ride. Now, in the original video, I had said I wanted to do a beach ride on Sophie that didn't happen however i have done a beach ride in scotland and i loved it so much i did a further two so i've actually done three beach rides this year and for someone who suffers with their confidence that is a massive achievement and i have to tell you i enjoyed every second of it so i can definitely tick off beach ride i did do it i just didn't do it on my own horse <laughs> Then I'd said I wanted to do a dressers competition. Well, it wasn't the best year for me and Sophie. Um, she has had some health issues. She's kind of been in and out of work. I've kind of got to the bottom of it now. So hopefully in 2022, we can power on ahead. There might just be one more test we need to do, but hopefully we can move in the right direction now. But we didn't do a dressage competition. Um, however, I have hacked her out. I have gone on rides out of the yard on my horse, which is a huge achievement. Um, I haven't done that for several years on my own pony and she is such a little star. So I think that is just way more important than any, anything else on this list, to be honest. Um... I've got to become more confident jumping. I definitely did that. I had a blast through the summer and kind of the autumn-ish time. We had great fun jumping and getting more confident. We've had a little bit of time off from it, um, but I'm going to have another go in the next week or two. So see how that goes. But yeah, we did have a lot of fun practicing our jumping this year. And stronger relationship, most definitely that is a big tick. Me and Sophie have got the best relationship right now. Um, we are also doing groundwork lessons together as well to, again, strengthen that bond. But this year I really feel like something's changed and we're more a partnership than just owner and horse. So definitely happy with everything that has happened with Sophie this year. Could have done without the health issues, but... I've got a great vet, a very understanding husband that helps me with the bills. And um, yeah, let's hope 2022 is a lot better. 
so moving on to the crafty side of things I had put down that I wanted to use my stash I have definitely done that this year I'm very pleased with how it's gone if I'm honest looking around you would not think I had like you can't even see the tiny little dent I've made in it but I know that I've used my stash and I haven't bought a whole load of stuff that I didn't need which is even better so happy with that happy with how that has gone then one of the things not written on here but that I set out in the original video was to grow the channel now I can't remember how many subscribers I had at the beginning of the year but to be ending the year on nearly 600 I mean that's just incredible to me so Thank you so much to everybody who has joined me, who has subscribed, who has watched my videos. It means so, so much. And definitely we'll have a goal for the new year of a number we'd like to hit, I think. But yeah, definitely growing the channel this year. Loved every moment of it. Loved getting to know you all. And yeah, I think you can hear my voice, how happy this channel makes me. So I love putting the videos out there. Then we have probably the biggest one of this year and I am still having to pinch myself that this one is real. I put down that I wanted to be on the design team for Craft Consortium and I did it and I was achieving my goal and achieving my dream that I've held for at least two and a half, three years. It feels incredible. And st still, I can't quite believe how privileged I am to have been chosen. I think one day I'll get used to the fact that my dreams come true. But right now, even months down the line, I still have to pinch myself like, is this real? Honestly, I'm still blown away. I'm still on cloud nine. And it just, it's the best feeling in the world when you get to live your dream. There's just no words. So definitely, if you have a dream and you're not sure about chasing it or you think, oh, well, it would be nice, but I'm not good enough or I'm, I don't know if I can do this. Always chase your dream because until you chase your dream, you don't know whether you're going to achieve it or not. Um, and anything can happen. So chase your dreams, honestly. OK, so the next thing on my list was to send random acts of kindness. Um, and I think I've definitely sent out some this year I haven't sent as many as, a, as I would have liked to have sent um I think the cost of postage in the UK has definitely impacted slightly on that um and I know certain countries weren't accepting mail from the UK I know that sounds really really crazy but I've been see seeing on happy mail groups that mail is being sent back because of the pandemic so it's a really fine line to tread. I have joined, as I say, two Happy Mail groups. Um, so definitely making steps in the right direction to ensure that I'm able to send to a broader spectrum of people. I also did my ATC challenge to enable me to send Happy Mail to my subscribers. And I have about 13 I think it is ATCs which I can put in a hat and pull out one a month throughout next year and send happy mail so that's definitely one happy mail each month that could go as well as birthday mail and stuff so I am on it and I'm kind of rolling that one over because uh, I'm not happy that I've done as many as I could have done but I have done some so I've ticked it off because I have done some but yeah room for improvement I think and the last one I have on the list was used dyes and embossing folders. And again, I have done that this year. I think I've been much better at using my dyes, um, especially since I got my new like system for cutting up and stash busting. Um, 
yeah, I definitely think I've done better. I think embossing folders, there's still room for improvement, but I have used them. But dies, I've definitely made a step in the right direction. So that is 2021 done and dusted. I'm going to leave this open while we talk about my goals and aspirations for 2022. So the channel is on almost 600 subscribers, which is just, it's amazing. And I think I need to keep aiming to push through and grow. Now, I had written down channel to a thousand, um, but I'm thinking I need to make that number maybe a little bit bigger. So let's say we're going to move my channel forward to 1200 so by this time next year i want my channel to be at at least 1200 subscribers if i get more absolutely fantastic but as a minimum that's what i'm aiming to get now i am going to do a giveaway at a thousand i've already got a lot put aside ready to go and i'll keep adding to that um so definitely keep your eyes on the channel for when I hit that magic thousand. But um, yeah, that's what I want to do. I also need to grow my Instagram. So I'd like to get my Instagram to 350. Um, I don't know if they're subscribers on Instagram, but you know, people who follow your page. Crafting wise, I need to be better at finishing cards. So I'm very good at finishing the outside. And then they kind of just get put in a box and they move on. So I need to be stamping on the inside of the card and finishing the inside off before I move on to the next project. So that is on my list. Also to think before I buy. So I did better this year. The only paper pads I bought were health couple ditch pads. I didn't buy any other paper pads and I'm not counting the Crafter Companion one because that was a vellum pad so that's different in my opinion. So I definitely did better with paper pads this year but I do think maybe I need to think before I splurge. Um, so that is on my list. I'm going to continue to use my stash. I think it's been going well, but I need to continue that momentum. So that's going on there. Continue to use my dies and embossing folders and stencils have been added into that this year. Um, I think I could use those more. And I have so many different mediums to play with that that's definitely going to be something I want to play around with. So that is on the list. And I'd like to try a new craft this year as well. I'm thinking maybe something needleworky. I don't know, maybe crochet or uh, cross stitch or something like that. If you've got any ideas, let me know. What should I try this year? What new craft shall I have a go at? If there's any preferences you have, let me know in comments. I would love to give something a go. I have underlined the next one several times, The Doll's House. This is a project we're going to be doing together. I did say I would put it on this channel because there was quite a bit of interest in people wanting to follow my progress. So The Doll's House is a very exciting project for next year. I'm not sure how that's going to look content wise, but I will share the progress with you. Then I've kind of got TikTok question mark. I am on TikTok, same handle as YouTube, Cards by Kate Fletcher. I don't know whether I'm going to pursue that or not. I might put a couple more up and just see how they do. I seem to have gained some followers on there without doing anything since October. So there's obviously people interested in the content that I put on there. Um, so I think we'll see. TikTok's a bit of a question mark for me at the moment. So those are my goals and aspirations for 2022. Let's hope we can tick a load of those off this year. And let me know in comments if you're setting any goals, aspirations. What do you want to achieve in 2022? 
So now we're going to move on to my top five buys of 2021 and my top five wish I hadn't bothered. So let's move this up way. So the first thing I have is this die here. Now it's completely my fault because I did not read the size guides when I saw it. I just saw it and knew I wanted to make this box. Um, but it's tiny. This die is literally tiny. I mean, there's five inches. There's 11 inches. So it's barely five and a half inches long. You can't really do anything with it. It's a bit pointless. Had it been the size I thought it was, I would have loved it. I have managed to use it a couple of times because I made the effort to try and find things that will fit in it. Um, so I could use it and I also used it in my advent swap that I did with Kim because I sent her some washi tapes and I popped those in the boxes um, but yeah this has been a pretty pointless die to own and I wish I'd put my money towards something else really then we have these now I bought these thinking they were like a cheaper version of gelatos and I'll be honest I'm not in love with them at all. <laughs> I probably haven't given them a fair chance. I might have another play with them in 2022 and just see if I change my opinion. Um, the only one that has had a load of use is this white one and I've used that for splatters on some Christmas projects that I worked on. Apart from that they haven't really been out of the box since I bought them because I just was like what have I done? As I say I might not be being particularly fair to the product I will give it another go in 2022 but as of the moment I just wish I hadn't spent the money I wish I'd put it towards something else so those are on the list the next product on my list is this one now this might be a bit controversial this was given to me by my husband for my birthday it was my 40th birthday and I really don't want to sound ungrateful but it's not really something I would have thought of for a 40th. As a product, it's a nice product. I haven't used it a lot. When I have used it, it's been fairly easy to use. I do need to do a review video of this. I haven't got around to doing one yet, but there will be a review video coming on this. It's just not something I've ever particularly wanted. So it's not something I would have bought myself, which is why it's on the list um, as a product as I say it's a good product I'm sure lots of people will love this and I will do a very fair review of it in the new year um, but yeah it's just not something that was really ever on my radar so that's why that's on the list next I've got the Perry page printer now again as a product it's great it's fine it's functional i just wish i hadn't spent the money on it because for what i wanted it for it's not suitable i will do a review of this in the new year um but as i say for what i wanted to use it for it occurred to me uh, a couple of months in that actually this wasn't going to be any good for what I wanted to use it for so sadly I've invested quite a bit of money in this and all the accessories that go with it and it's just not what I needed it to be so that's why that is on the list and the last thing on the wish I hadn't list is this cardstock funnily enough now the only reason this is on the list is because of the size i had a complete brain fart moment when i bought this and i didn't realize how small this was going to be i actually thought this was going to be bigger 
So <laughs> it's my fault entirely. I should have checked my sizings, maybe. I don't know. Um, but as it is, this isn't hugely practical for me and for what I wanted it for. Um, I have been using it for tags over the Christmas period. I have managed to make some cards out of it by um, scoring and gluing, basically. Um, and they've come out quite well. Um, I just wish that I had either checked my sizings and ordered the correct size or put my money towards something completely different because this size of card just doesn't work for me and for the kind of crafting I do. So, although it's a lovely card, don't get me wrong, this card is amazing and it's really nice quality. It's just not what I thought it was going to be and I wish I hadn't invested the money in it. So let's move on to my top five product buys of the year and end this video on a really good note. So first of all, we have Nuvo Crystal Drops. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love these things. I am really late to the party on these. Like I've literally only got these in the last year. Um, and I use them all the time. I now need every single colour of the crystal drops. I haven't even looked at stone drops or vintage drops. I've got a couple of glitter drops because they came in a bundle. So obviously I'm going to have to get those next. But I do want to try and collect more of these colours. Um, I just love these. I love the little diamonds on the lids. I love how easy they are to use. I love the colour choices. I love the effect they have on cards and embellishments you can make. There's just so much you can do with them. And I wish I had come to the party a bit sooner on Nuvo Drops because I'm just in love with them. The next thing, again, I'm late to the party on this. Glossy Accents. I gave in and bought this for the first time this year. I have since seen some cheaty versions. Um, but again, I absolutely love this. I think it's a really nice way to finish a project and make things stand out. And I really, really like it. So really happy that I finally gave in. I've used maybe a quarter of the tube. So I think it's quite good value for money as well. And we all like to get value for money. So really liking my glossy accents. And the next thing, again, I'm really late to the party on a lot of this stuff gelatos i love these i have three sets now i was going to ask for a set for christmas but then i thought you know what i haven't played with these for quite a long time so i don't want to invest more money in another set when i'm not using the ones i've already got so i didn't ask my husband for the ones that were on my amazon wish list for christmas um, but I love them and it's definitely something I need to get out and get using in 2022. I just think they're so versatile. They have the best colour range, the nicest colours. They have funky names as well, which I'll be honest, that sells me on quite a lot of different things. Like if they've got good names, I really like that. Um, and I like how they come packaged as well. And also how they come with tools. So you've got the paintbrushes, you've got the sponges. I just love them. I think they're absolutely fantastic and they're so much fun to use. So I put those on my top buys of this year. I know they've been around for a long time, but again, I'm late to the party. Up next, we have Black Widow pencils. Now, these are the dragons. These are the ones I got for Christmas. I also have... The two skin tones, the Monix, the Black Widow Originals, the Scorpions and the Cobras. I literally have the complete collection because my husband and daughter have bought them for me throughout the year. And I love them. I am obsessed with these pencils. They are so nice to use. Again, they have the best names. Um, they are very beginner friendly. They are a good price point. There is a review video coming up in the new year as well as a full unboxing of this set. So if you're interested in that, 
definitely keep an eye on the channel and ring that bell for notifications so you hear whenever I upload a video. Um, but yeah, absolutely love these. These have changed my whole colouring life, I suppose. Wrong word, not the right word, but you kind of get my drift. These are just amazing. I absolutely love them. So very happy with those. They had to be on the list. And then my number one top buy of the year. Can you guess? If you know me, you'll know what's coming. Of course, it's a house couple ditch paper pad. For once, I wasn't late to the party. Now, this one is one of my top buys of the year for many reasons. This was on my top five paper pads of the year and it came in at number one, obviously. Um, I also have this on the top buys of the year because it's probably one of the pads that I've used the most this year. I got it in August and I've been using it ever since. However, there's still loads left for next year, which is great. I've used up a load of my scraps. You won't see a lot of scraps in this pad because I've gone to them before taking the new sheet. I just love it. It's such a versatile pad. I have done so much with it. Obviously, it's by my favourite company and my favourite designer. And when... I bought this, I literally bought this in the morning and then in the evening I got the email saying I was being accepted onto the design team. So the emotions that go with this pad for me are just indescribable. But it had to be in my top five buys because this pad makes me so happy. How could you look at the front of that pad and be miserable? I mean, it's just the happiest pad. It's the most beautiful colours and there's nothing to dislike. So that is why this pad is in my top five buys of the year because honestly, I think I'd have been sad if I hadn't bought it. So that is the review of my crafty and kind of personal year of 2021. That's also my goals set for 2022 and also my top five best buys of this year as well as my five I wish I hadn't bothered. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in comments what you think of my top buys and also what you think of my wish I hadn't bothered. I'd be really interested to know your opinions on those. And also let me know if you have a top product that you've bought this year that you're just like, how did I live without this? I would love to know because obviously if there's things I need to try in 2022, I definitely need to know about that. So on that note, I just want to wish you all a very happy new year. I really hope 2022 is so much better for us all and a lot healthier thank you so so much for watching today if you're not already subscribed please hit that subscribe button and give this video a massive thumbs up if you have loved it i will be back soon with more videos i have so much content planned for 2022 i'm really excited to get started so until next time thank you so much for watching take care and i'll see you soon Bye for now.